ministered to the Lord has been rich here this morning. I don't want to get in the way and stop it. This is what we've been praying for. Amen. This is exactly what we've been praying for. Well, it's the beginning of what we've been praying for. Let's just call it that. The beginning of what we've been praying for. Sister Marcia, you sing a song. Sometimes you can tell when somebody's praying. You can tell when they're down on their knees. <laughs> you can tell when they've touched heaven. Hallelujah. 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 I don't believe Pentecostal has expired. No. No. I don't believe it's expired. I believe it's still in existence today. Well, if I'm correct, I don't think today's Pentecost Sunday by the calendar, but any time it's Pentecost Sunday when the Spirit of the Lord moves. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Doing him the service, but we used to be doing this for those who cannot come to church and for those who haven't been and fixing to come and don't know it yet. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. Uh, in the book of Revelation this morning, the Lord will help us. Got something on my heart. And uh, uh, been on here all week. And we were uh, talking about this in and, and our Sunday morning Bible class before we got rudely closed down. And uh, uh, But I felt impressed to go ahead with this one today, if you'll help me, if you'll help me, amen. And I need the Lord to help me, and I need you to help me. Now, June the 7th, June the 7th, we'll open back up again and start our service at 10 o'clock. And again, like we were before, but we got one more Sunday doing it this way, and then we'll go back to 10 o'clock. And uh, pray that the Lord will continue to help us. Got a good crowd this morning. And my, again, had not it been such a great spirit among us here today? Amen. Amen. Such a great spirit. And the presence, the presence of the Lord being here. And when I say a great spirit, we know what we're talking about, don't we? The Holy Ghost is always great. But I'm talking about it's great when he moves the way that he has this morning. Amen. So great. So great. And uh, if the Lord will help us Revelation chapter 4. For the sake of time, I'm only going to read the first verse because that's all I'm going to preach about this morning is just the first verse. And uh, 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 another lesson, another time, we'll go beyond that. But this morning, we're looking at Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. And... Uh, John said, After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Now let's notice it in I. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter and again I want to stress that one more time amen I heard the voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word. Amen. Hallelujah. As I said earlier, I felt pressed of the Spirit. Now, before I go any further, I, I'm, if I don't have it written down, I'm bad with preliminaries. And I uh, don't want to get too carried away with preliminaries anyway right at the moment. But Brother Greg will be preaching for us tonight. And uh, Brother Greg Isaac. But I've uh, been pressed in the Spirit with this message this week, this passage of Scripture. And if you've been coming to the Sunday school class, you remember that Revelation chapter 1 deals with the opening of the revelation of Jesus Christ to John. Chapters 2 and 3, it deals with the digress of the churches in the last day. You remember we started out with Ephesus and went all the way through Laodicea and we saw how the church digressed. Amen. Rather than to be absolutely on fire for God the way that God called them to be as the years progressed, the church began to get further and further away from God. Amen. Help us preach here just a few minutes. And as I pointed out in another message here one Wednesday night, Jesus said seven times during chapters 2 and 3, He said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Amen. And what God was actually trying to tell these people through the Apostle John Amen. And the people down through the ages until we get to where we're living right now, when we see the condition that we're in, 
that it's time to repent. Hallelujah. When you see the condition that the church is in, it's time to repent. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, we can see these things as it happened. But now in chapter 4, we start the beginning of a new vision to John. Hallelujah. And I want us to notice again what John said. The voice that he heard was as the sound of a trumpet. He said unto me, come up hither. Amen. The beginning of this new vision, amen, relates to the things that are in heaven. Amen. Things that are in heaven after the period of the church as we know it today has expired. Amen. Do you realize today that this time there's a time limit on the church today? My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I said there's a time limit on the church today. Amen. And I'll say it again before I sit down. If we're going to do anything for the kingdom of God, we've got to get it done during this time limit. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here Christ is dealing with his church, his elect, after they've been taken up miraculously and moved to heaven in the cloud. Hallelujah. Now before this happened, and I'll go back just a little bit here. Amen. Uh, 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 before the church ever existed, that, that, that Satan pulled a third part of the angels out of heaven with him. Now we know that that happened because the Bible said it did. Amen. He convinced the third part of the angels in heaven that he was co-equal with Christ. Right. Now I've said this before and I'll say it again. Satan can never be co-equal with Christ. Right. Satan is a created being. He's just simply a created being. Jesus is the eternal Son of God. Hallelujah. So anything that the devil gets in his mind that he can be equal with Christ, he's deceived himself. He knew he was not equal with Christ, but he, he deceived a third part of the angels in heaven. Amen. That he was equal with Christ and he pulled them down. Amen. And since that day, my friends, we've had to put up with the devil. Amen. But there's a day that he'll not be able to bother us again. Oh, glory to God. Now, since we happen to put up with the devil and he's moved to corrupt the church, we can see that in chapters 2 and 3 in the book of Revelation. And if we've got any mind at all about us, we can see how he moves to corrupt the church in this day. We can read in the Bible that the end will not come except our first come of falling away. And so that's dealing with that enemy, isn't it? Amen. And we've got to deal with wolves coming in sheep's clothing. That's that devil. Amen. Coming to deceive men and women if he can. Amen. Then we've got to put up with people departing from the faith. And I've said this numerous, numerous times. Amen. I would like to say that we could get saved and we'd never backslide. You know, there's some that do that. And uh, we can't just blame that on one group of people anymore. That doctrine has got in to just about every church organization in this entire world today, people feel like that they got saved and they got baptized and regardless of what they ever do, that they'll never be lost. Rest in peace, rest in peace. I'm going to tell you if they die in their sins, there will be no rest for the wicked. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Departing from the faith. Then we've got these damnable her heresies that's brought into the church. Amen. Various, various ways to pull people away from God. 
But in spite of all these things that's been brought against the church, there is a remnant that will prevail. Yes. Amen. Revelation chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. And because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world and try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, uh, and behold, I come quickly, hold fast that which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Hallelujah. Then we wonder, Lord, how is this deliverance going to come about? 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 tells us that there's going to be a voice. There's going to be a voice. John said there was a voice. Hallelujah. The voice has the sound of a trumpet. Come up hither. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Paul said there's going to be a voice. There's going to be a shout. There's going to be a sound. Amen. And when that sound comes, amen. Now, I don't know what it's going to sound like. Amen. My mother don't even know what it was, was going to sound like. But the Lord done called her home just a little over a year ago. And while she's waiting in the ground, amen, there's going to be a day that that sound is going to happen. Amen. And that woman that we call Ruth Sparks is going to come out of the ground. You hear me? Oh, glory. You think about your saints, your loved ones that's gone on to glory. They don't know what that's going to sound like. And that body's laying there, as the scripture said, going back to corruption. Amen. But something is going to happen, and all of a sudden they'll recognize something that they've never recognized before. A sound. I said a sound. Oh, glory to God. We thought we'd just get all caught up away at the sound of Pentecostalism. Amen. That's a great sound. But what about that sound? That trump of God. That sounds that calls the redeemed to glory. Sister Kathy said earlier that there's some songs that regardless of how pretty they are, she said she just could not do them justice. And that's about the way I feel with some of the songs in the old red back hymnal. Amen. I like that song. Amen. When the home gates swing wide for me. Amen. I love that song. And I think I tried to lead it one time and give up on it. Amen. Hallelujah. But the second song I really like is when the redeemed are gathered again. Hallelujah. Amen. Thinking of the rapture of that blessed home on high. When the redeemed are gathering in. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, I'd like to preach if I could. And Paul said that all that would happen in the moment and in the twinkling of an eye. Luke 17, 34 4 through 37. Jesus said, I'll tell you, and I'll tell you in that night, there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken, and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken, and the other left. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? Jesus said, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles, eagles be gathered together. He mentions the rapture of the church here and gives us an idea of what's going on or what will take place. And then in verse 37, it's so confusing to so many because he said where the eagles are or the vultures are, there the carcasses will be gathered together. What he's saying is that just because the church is caught up don't mean that time is completely ended. Are you helping me here a few minutes? Amen. Because when the church is caught up, that clears the way for the Antichrist. That clears
clears the way, amen, for all these others, amen. But right then, when the church is called up, that door that John saw opened in heaven, he saw open was for the ascension of the saints. Come up hither, amen. Psalm 31, 9, uh, 19 and 20, talking about being caught up in the safety of his pavilion. Amen. Is somebody helping me? I hope I'm not confusing us this morning. Being called up to the safety of the pavilion. My Lord, I feel like a preacher here this morning. Amen. That's the termination. The termination of the earthly career of God's elect. That's where I said a few minutes ago, if we're going to do anything for God, we better be doing it today. If we believe in the imminent coming of the Lord, and I believe in the imminent coming. I believe he can come before this service is over. If we believe in the imminent coming of Christ, amen, we better live and act like he's coming. Amen. We better live and act like he's looking right over your shoulder. Amen. Because he is my friend. Amen. If that trump of God sounds, we'll not hear and understand what it is if we're not looking for him. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to be like Enoch. I want to be one that can walk with God because he took him. Hallelujah. Whatever we're going to do, we better do it quickly. Yeah. Amen. You hear me? Yeah. Whatever we're going to do for God, we better do it quickly. And I know I said a few minutes ago that when the church is gone, then that leaves it open for the rest of this stuff to happen throughout the book of Revelation after chapter 6 and on. That leaves it open for these things to take place. And I've heard people say, well, that's all right. I'll get saved after the rapture. Well, number one, you're not going to get saved any time unless you feel the Holy Ghost drawing you. You're never going to get saved if you don't feel the drawing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So people will be foolish enough to say, I'll put it off until the trump of God sounds, and when the church is gone, then I'll be left here to preach to the rest of them. Really? Whenever I read of those pandemics and those natural disasters that's going to take place during the rest of the book of Revelation that's going to wipe out two-thirds of the population of this world. Hey, man, who's to say you won't be part of the first third that gets wiped out? Hey, man, and you'll still be lost without God regardless of what you think you know. You'll be lost without Him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't claim I know it all because I know I don't. And I'm not doing this passage of Scripture anywhere near the justice that it deserves other than to feel the impression of the Holy Ghost to tell us today that the things that you just experienced and that we're still experiencing with our government holding their hand over you and telling us where we can have church, where we can eat, where we can go and where we can't go. Amen. That's just the beginning of what's going to take place right on down the road. Are you helping me here a few minutes? Amen. I've not liked it. I've resisted it from day one. Are you helping me here? I've hollered, hooped, and howled. Amen. Just like somebody would step on my sore toe. Yeah. Amen. I was building a little project there at the house, a little chicken coop, and I've got overweight again. Amen. And I'm trying to get down and get up and get down and get up. And Brother Brad, sometimes I catch myself in a place where i got nothing to get a hold of to get up with. And so I push myself off with my big toe on my right foot. And I did that one day all day, pushing myself up with that big toe on my right foot. Sister Kim, when I got ready to take my boots off that night and took my socks off, I looked, and that big toenail is as black as it could be. I bruised it. Amen. 
and it was sore, and it's still a little bit sore. I never got the thing on it. It's just sore. And that's the way I hollered and howled over them shut the church down. And the thing about it was, I said I'd never do it. But then whenever it looked like that nobody wasn't going to come, or at least that's the impression I got, if I did go ahead and have it out there, then we wouldn't be able to have it at all. Oh, but I didn't like it. I hollered and howled. Amen. But just like I've hollered and howled over shutting the church doors, I've heard people say, talking about as they set the stage, and you may not be realizing, I'm trying not trying to scare you. I'm just telling you the facts of life. Oh. Amen. While they've set the stage for controlling us, they've also set the stage to where they've got just a little thing that they can slip under your skin yes. that's got your bank account number, got your driver's license number, hit know everything in the world about you. Amen. And you say, I'll never do that. But one of these days, whenever they get that just right, you know some of you folks work in factories and places that you've got a card in your pocket that you don't even have. Brother Tom probably has. He's shaking his head. He's got a card in his pocket that he don't even have to have a key to the building. He's already got clearance. Amen. And they know who Tom Stiffler is when he walks up and he don't even have to take that card out of his wallet. He just walks up and the door will open for him. Amen. One of these days those cards will be stopped. Amen. Are you helping me here a few minutes? And they'll say, Tom Stifler, the only way you can get in this building is to have this implanted into your hand. And I held up my left hand. Amen. Or somewhere in your body. Somebody say that ain't the mark of the beast. It may not be having the number of a man's name. Amen. But it is the beginning of it. And people say, I will not take part of that. But they will take part of it. Is somebody helping me? Amen. Just like we found ourselves yielded to it. Amen. Without being filled with the Spirit. And without being ready to be caught up. Oh, glory to God. I'm telling you, I don't know how far we're going to go into the wrath of man. But I'm here to tell you one thing. I will not suffer the wrath of God. But glory to God. Somebody help me here a few minutes. Oh, glory. I feel the Holy Ghost getting on me here again. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. So if there was a time that we prayed for revival, we better be praying for revival. And I'm not scolding us here today, but I feel like sometimes, Sister Marcia, we've got in our mind, amen, this modern church world has, that the only time God's going to really bless is on Sunday morning. And then if he don't, I've still done my duty. That's not going to bring revival. I'm going to tell you, God blesses on Wednesday night and God blesses on Saturday night just as well as He will here like He did on Sunday morning. But we've got to have a desire for a Holy Ghost move of God for an old-time revival. I read last week, and I may not quote this just like he said it, but Jack Kirkland, is, uh, is, uh, he's 85 years old. He's born the same day my mother. And he is a tremendous Bible teacher, the old-time Bible teacher, amen, in the Assemblies of God. And he said this modern-day church, and I think I wrote it down, he said the Pentecostal message has been deteriorated, has deteriorated that we are, uh, uh, that we are now in the kingdom age rather than approaching the Great Tribulation. You'd think that folks, with the way they think, that we're already in the millennium. That we're never going to have to suffer anything. That there's never going to be any trials and tribulation to come upon us the way it does the rest of the world. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, suffering is on the way, friend. Amen. And you better pray for revival like you've never prayed. Am I preaching to myself? Get into our Bibles. Study. Don't 
Don't let another day pass while you're living in your sins. Not another day. Amen. Because one of these days that trumpet of God is going to sound. It's going to sound. And may we be found in peace without spot and blameless. Oh, you're quiet. Uh -huh. While we find ourselves, Lord, I'll never be without spot. I'll never be without blameless. I'll never be without blame. There's always going to be somebody poking their finger at me. There's always going to be this going on and that going on. But let me tell you something. All that they can point their finger at me has been covered by the blood. And that I'm as blameless as I can be from the time that blood was applied to my sin. Are you helping me? That's the same way it is with you. Hallelujah. Oh, he's this, he's that. She's done this, she's done that. That's just a trick of the devil to make you feel like you're a nobody whenever God's fixing to call home somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I don't think that's coincidence that John said what he did and I heard, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me. God put that there for a reason. To let us understand that there was a day that the church's work would be done. Is your work done? Is your work undone? Have you got everything finished? I got some things I want to finish. I got some things I still want to work on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm fixing to tell on myself. I looked, I had a bad habit when I was younger, looking and judging other people's ministers. And I felt impressed to say this. Boy, that can't preach. Woo, that can preach. This man, he can't preach his way out of a wet paper sack. I had a terrible time doing that. And then one day, I read, and I'm pretty sure it was D.L. Moody, he was in England, and I didn't know the man, but they tell me that he didn't have the most proper vocabulary, you know, just his country, as Brother Harold said the other day, country is cold for him, and just as country as he could be, but whenever he gained fame and notoriety because of his preaching and so many people coming to Christ, he got invited to England to preach. And after he preached and had a tremendous sermon and people came and gave their hearts to God, that somebody nailed him after the service and told him just how bad his vocabulary was and how, he, how much he discredited what he called the king's English while he was preaching. And they said that Moody turned around and told him, he said, well... I did the very best I could with what I've got to do. But he said, what are you doing with what you've got? If you know so much about the king's English, then why aren't you preaching instead of me? Amen. I'm here to tell you, whenever I read that, <clears throat> I got under conviction that man that can't preach as good as I thought a man ought to preach. And then whenever I really got thinking about it, Sister Kim, he was doing a whole lot better than me to begin with. And I really can't hardly preach anyway whenever I really get to thinking about it. Sometimes I get nervous, Brother Bill, and I glory to God and amen it to death. It's a wonder that you can even catch anything I'm saying. Stop and catching my breath and saying amen or glory to God. Hey, are you helping me here a few minutes? Or hallelujah or something while I'm catching my breath to get my next thoughts? Amen, but I'm liking what I got a hold of the way I have here this morning where I can feel the presence of God and whether I can preach or not, I still feel like I can. Are you helping me today? And God wants you to
to step out and do something in this last time. Amen. With what you've got, do something for the kingdom of the Lord. Well, God's got to work for you. He's got to work for you. And in a way, I feel like I have hindered the service somewhat in the direction that it was going. Perhaps we should have just sang on and worshiped. But I felt it pressed to warn us today. That Trump is fixing his sound. I think back in 1918 was the last major pandemic, pandemic, and it's great work, really way worse than what we're facing now. What we're facing now is a bad sickness, but it's been politicized so bad and made worse than what it is. And they've shut the world down just for politics. Yeah. But 1918, 1919 had two bad outbreaks of that flu and took out millions of people. Millions of people. And there's a few old enough to remember that right today, a very few. Amen. Are you helping me here a few minutes? And now we're going through this and the government realizes, the governments of the world realize that this is the time to come under the new world order and I'm fixing to get a little political here today. The only reason it's not being done is because of the president of this nation, amen, and the prime minister of Israel walking, I'm not Israel, but England, walking hand in hand on this and saying it's not so, you can't do it yet, amen. But you get them moved out of the way, Amen. Because people forget real quickly. Are you listening to me? They forget real quickly. And oh, help me here a few minutes. And while they forget, and then something else will break loose, much, much worse than what we're going through right now. Amen. Under a liberal administration throughout the world. And it'll be time for them to step in and say, now's the day that we get this thing done. Oh, glory. I'm here to tell us today. While they're making their preparations to hold on and lock the world down, I want this church, along with the rest of God's church, to make preparation to be listening for the sound of that trumpet. Amen. That any time, any day, any hour, oh glory, that trumpet of God sounds that we're out of here. I'm closing. Somebody come get us a song here at the piano. This morning, real quickly, real quickly, while well, I come to a close. And I've thought this over in my mind. And I've had the enemy, Brother Mitchell, on my shoulder, just like everybody else does. Right. And he says, go ahead and preach that. Preach that and preach it. Let it be recorded and let it be broadcast. And there's a lot of places that won't let you preach anymore. After you do that. Well, and I just told the devil this. Well, I'll never get called on to preach anywhere anyway. My primary spot's right here. Right here. This is my primary spot. And if somebody shuts me down over preaching the word because they haven't properly interpreted the rest of it, then I'll just keep on doing what I'm doing. But I'm here to tell you, I'm looking for Jesus to return. Oh, yeah. I'm looking for him to return. Uh, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we're not going to have every service where we got a hold of it the way we did, like we have here this morning. But we shouldn't be going as long as we have been, should we? Some of us right here this morning need prayer for their bodies. But we've been so overwhelmed by the Spirit moving the way He has here this morning that we're just delighted to be able to feel Him and such liberty. But some of us need healing for our bodies right while all this is going on. And I'm going to say this one more time. One time, I was preaching at Dole Creek. They got that song about ready. I was preaching at Dole Creek. There wasn't too many there. We was getting in, and Sister Step wasn't able to be there that night. But as she always did, she pressed on and came. Her and other sister that came with her all the time. And I forgot her name right at the moment. Real that wise my town. Sister Cole. Sister, Sister Cole, Bill Cole. They were there together that no creek. And I don't know, 
remember if it was a Tuesday night or a Sunday afternoon at two. And she was too sick to be there. And I got up to preach, making the feeble attempt that I feel like I always do. And I got up to preach. And she said this. She said, Lord, I'm too sick to get up there right now. But right while he's preaching, Lord, if I stretch my hand toward him, would you heal me? I don't know why the Lord didn't completely heal her. But brother, I'll tell you, she come up and shout, and I thought so was my preaching. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. God had just touched her through her faith. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Would you stand all over the house with it? God touch you and heal you here this morning. Praise the Lord. Oh, glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we come around the altars? Come right over while we sing. Let's come around the altars. We got time. We got time. Amen. We're not in that big a hurry. Let's come around the altars. Are you ready? Should